The year 1959 gave us what many people believe to be the shining jewel in the crown of jazz. This is the Righteous Bo Jambo, and it's time to talk about Kind of Blue. Every genre within the classic canon, it could be argued, has a golden year. A year to which all other subsequent years are referred to as the best since. For rock music, it's probably 1966. Classic metal, 1970 or 71. Jamaican music, 1968. Punk, 1976. Krautrock, 1973, etc. For jazz, in the long game of history, that year is the wonder that was 1959. The most striking characteristic of jazz in 1959 was how its practitioners chose to respond in the face of the musical, social and cultural landscape. With bop now long past and small arcane ideas such as modal jazz failing to create a dominant music, the post-bop landscape now belonged to the individual musician with a vision and was riper for redefinition more now than it ever was before. Jazz had also been supplanted as a music of youth by rock and roll, which itself went into terminal decline in 1959. Jazz had begun to divide itself between the adult sophisticated styles and the more adventurous young adult, college and post-college markets. At the vanguard of this were six albums, all recorded in 1959, one was released in February 1960, which pushed at the commercial, cultural and artistic boundaries of the form, often on all three fronts at once. They included the biggest selling jazz album of all time and the album that spawned the biggest selling jazz single of all time. This will be a series of thumbnail sketches on those sensational six, Albums which are most likely owned by any serious jazz fans or are the perfect starting pack for anyone with ambitions to explore the world of jazz. We begin with Miles Davis's astonishing kind of blue. Blue is the album that even people who say they don't like jazz like. Recorded at Columbia's legendary 30th Street Studios in three sessions totaling less than nine hours, Davis recorded the band without rehearsals, without having previously seen the music, and with a kind of new pianist in the band, Bill Evans, had been invited by Davis to return and Wynton Kelly sat out the sessions, with the exception of Freddie Freeloader, and Davis insisted on issuing the first completed take of all of the songs. In fact, the only song of which are any fragments of previous takes is Flamenco Sketches, which took six goes to produce a full performance. As Miles himself said, if you put a musician in a place where he has to do something different from what he does all the time, that's where the great art and music happen. Kind of Blue is seen as a high point of the modal jazz music, something musical philosopher and band leader George Russell first advocated in 1953. Bill Evans played in George Russell's groups and Miles had been experimenting with since 1957. What this basically means is because there are no chords thickening up the sound, as Miles puts it, modal playing is more melodically flexible yet harmonically spontaneous, with the melodies and harmonies very streamlined. Pianists Evans and Kelly usually did not provide the traditional comp and played as part of the lead section, providing melodic runs alongside saxophonists Julian Adley on alto, John Coltrane on tenor, and Miles's trumpet. Every song on Kind of Blue is warm, engrossing, musically rich, and would have made any other half-decent album a classic just by being. It opens with So What, with what many, myself included, think is the greatest solo of Miles's career. Relaxed, stylish, cocky, lyrical, and swinging. It uses the bluesy nature of the Dorian mode, to find endless hooks for his sunny melody to venture out of. 
Next is Wynn Kelly's star turn on Freddy Freeloader, his sticky and salty piano leaving an object lesson in the blues. Side one closes on Blue and Green, which is Bill Evans' masterpiece and my favourite on the album. Adderley sits out, Coltrane plays the lonesomest solo you've ever heard in your life, and in the background, speaking in a whisper that you can hear every word he says, is Jimmy Cobb, the drummer, and the secret hero of the song. Miles must have liked it. He takes two solos on, the second superior even to the magnificent first. All Blues is a behemoth, a relentlessly swinging beast in 6-8 time, constantly driven forward by a circle of 7th chords, featuring a typically a solid comp from Evans. Miles plays a muted trumpet, generally in the introduction, but with increasing clarity and expression in the choruses. Adelie and Coltrane provide diametrically differently toned solos, including an epic clam from Coltrane at 7 minutes 35. Evans then comes in and threatens to upset the whole harmonic apple cart with his solo, but he resolves it very neatly. The conclusion, Flamenco Sketches, is a cyclic series of modes for each soloist that they are to work through for however long until they've reached the end of the cycle. Or so they say. For me, it's the diametric opposite of what passes for radio folly these days. In so much as while pop tunes these days are afraid to leave space in their records, filling out every inch of them with some kind of sonic folder on, Flamenco Sketches is unafraid to be languid, diaphanous, and embracing of silence. But you can't break kind of blue down into its constituent elements to explain it. It is truly a machine more powerful than all its parts, and the more parts you break it down into, the more powerful it gets. Notwithstanding the fact that it has powerful cultural baggage, the mystique of Miles Davis, the impeccable album package, the aura of doom genius that Bill Evans and Paul Chambers casts over it, the cachet of John Coltrane, the myriad stories about its creation and release, they all pale to what you can hear. The music, the hefty emotional range, and sometimes your own heartbeat. And what you cannot hear, the ghostly spaces in blue and green and flamenco sketches that leave you troublingly alone with your thoughts. If you're a person who's always been tepid on jazz, but had even the dullest ember of curiosity, and if you didn't face it, you, you wouldn't be on this channel, Kind of Blue should probably be your starting point. And I think you'll find there are a few albums that you can invest in that will prove more rewarding than a copy of Kind of Blue.